In the previous segment, we saw that a luminosity selection is a selection based on the luminosity values within the image. But I find that knowing what a luminosity selection is just makes me think of a whole bunch of new questions. Here are a few. How do you make a luminosity selection? What exactly is being selected? Once a luminosity selection is made, how does it become a luminosity mask? And is a luminosity selection like any other selection? Let's explore these questions one at a time. How do you make a luminosity selection? As with all things in Photoshop, there are multiple ways to accomplish the same result. I'll show you two ways of making a luminosity selection. One is to hold down the control key or the command key on a Mac and then click on the channel from which you want to make the selection. In this case, the RGB channel. I could also make a selection from the red channel or the green channel or the blue channel by holding down the control or command key and clicking on the channel. The other way to make a luminosity selection is to highlight the channel that you want to make the selection from and then click the load channel as selection icon at the bottom of the channels panel. For the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. or the RGB channel. Either method you use creates the same selected area as indicated by the marching ants. If you aren't familiar with the term marching ants, it's what we call the moving dotted lines that outline selections in Photoshop. What exactly is being selected? A lot of marching ants appear on the screen when a luminosity selection is made, but it can be difficult to determine exactly what has been selected. Tony and I find that using a tone gradient is invaluable in helping us determine which luminosity values are included in a selection. To make a tone gradient, start by creating a new white image document. It can be any size, but 1000 pixels on the long side should fit well in most screens. For the color settings, choose the RGB color mode, and it probably doesn't make too much difference, but I also select the 16-bit depth to make sure that I have a smooth tonal gradient. Now select the gradient tool, set the foreground color to white and the background color to black, and now drag a gradient from one side of the white image to the other side, and the gradient will be created. This is a document that contains all of the luminosity values from pure white to pure black with very smooth gradient of shades of gray in between. I recommend that you create and save your own tone gradient to help you better visualize luminosity selections. You can save it as a TIFF file or a PSD file and call it Tone Gradient and then open it up whenever you want to visualize a luminosity selection. Now let's make a luminosity selection of the RGB channel of this gradient. So I'm going to hold down the control or command key and click on the RGB channel. You can clearly see that it is the lightest portion of the gradient that has been selected. So it appears that we are selecting the brightest luminosity values in the image. Tony calls this initial luminosity selection of the brightest tones a lights selection. Because half the lightest tones are selected, I often refer to this as a 50% lights selection. Let's return to our color image. Now we can see that the marching ants are indicating that the brightest luminosity values in this image are selected. Once a luminosity selection is made, how does it become a luminosity mask? Let's start by deselecting this current selection. In Photoshop, if you first make a selection, like I did previously when I used the quick selection tool to select the sky, and then generate a new white mask. For example, when I create a curves adjustment layer, as long as the selection was active when the mask was made, the mask will reflect the selection. In the mask, the area inside the selection will be white, revealing any adjustment made on that layer. And the area outside the selection will be black, concealing any adjustments made on that layer. Luminosity selections are no different in this respect. If you have a luminosity selection active, and then generate a new mask, the mask will reflect the selection. 
is a luminosity selection like any other selection. This is where masks made from luminosity selections show their true worth. Luminosity selections are not binary like more simple selections. That is to say that the pixels in a luminosity selection are not either 100% selected or 100% not selected resulting in a pure white and black mask. To view a mask, hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and click the mask thumbnail. When we view the mask of the original sky selection that we made, we can see that it is a very simple all white or all black mask. But when we view the mask generated from the luminosity selection, we can see that it is a very different and very highly detailed mask. Now we can see that every pixel in the image was actually selected somewhere between 0% and 100% based on its luminosity, with 0% being black in the mask, 100% being white in the mask, and every other degree of luminosity being partially selected and resulting in different shades of gray. So if every pixel, other than pure black, is partially selected to some degree, what do the marching ants in a luminosity selection actually show us? They are showing us regions of the image in which the pixels are at least 50% selected. In the case of this current light selection, the ants were drawn around areas of the image in which the pixels had a tonal value of roughly 50% gray or lighter, and therefore they are at least 50% or more selected. Now that we know how to make a basic lights luminosity selection and then create a mask using that selection, let's find out what it would look like to make an adjustment using the mask. Instead of this image, I'm going to go to a different image that has a little more contrasty light. It'll make the luminosity mask a little more obvious and apparent. Before we go to a luminosity mask adjustment, let's just try an adjustment through a more standard black and white mask. I created this mask of the sky. You can see that the sky is entirely white in the mask, so that will reveal all of the adjustment in that area. And the landscape is entirely black in the mask so none of the adjustment will happen in that region of the image. I made it on a curves adjustment layer so I can darken the image by dragging the curve down or lighten the image by dragging the curve up and you can see that that adjustment is being constrained to just the sky by that mask. So that's what an adjustment looks like through a very basic black and white mask. Let's try a similar curves adjustment through a lights luminosity mask. So I'm going to control click on the RGB layer to generate that initial lights luminosity selection and then I'll create a curves adjustment layer and because that selection was active when I made the layer the mask represents the selection and we can see that in that mask the lightest areas of the mask were the brightest areas of the image and the darkest areas of the mask were the darkest areas of the image. That means that any adjustment that we do with this mask will have the greatest effect in the lightest areas, the least effect in the darkest areas, and all the gray areas it will have some degree of intermediate effect. So if I drag my curve down you can see that I'm darkening the image if I drag it up, I'm lightening the image, but I'm not darkening it all in one area, and I'm also not darkening it evenly across the entire image. It's a little hard to tell exactly how the mask is constraining the adjustment. So if you'd like to see what that adjustment looks like without the mask, you can hold down the shift key and click on the mask to turn it off. And there we can see that that same adjustment without the mask darkens the entire image pretty extremely. But with that luminosity mask, it's darkening the brightest places in the grasses and the trees and on the mountain and having very little to no effect in the darkest shadows of the image. And all the mid-tone areas of the image are being darkened a lesser degree. And if I wanted to put more contrast into that adjustment, I could bring up my highlights a little bit in the curve and create an adjustment that has the effect I want but is targeted more towards those highlight areas and less towards the shadow areas. 
Now this luminosity mask is not unlike any other mask that you would use in Photoshop. And that means that you can use luminosity selections to create masks for any kind of adjustment that you might want to do, just like with any other mask. So let's turn off this curves luminosity mask adjustment. And I'm going to create another lights luminosity selection. And this time I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. That hue saturation adjustment layer now has that lights luminosity mask attached to it, which means that any adjustments that I make to the saturation will be targeted more towards the brighter areas of the image and less towards the dark areas of the image. So you can see those grasses and the sky and the mountains becoming very, very saturated. Or if I desaturate, those areas become very unsaturated, but the shadow areas are having very little saturation change. And we can check out just how the mask is controlling that adjustment by shift clicking on the mask and see what the adjustment would look like without the mask active. So now I think you can see the potential of luminosity masks to make very detailed and precise adjustments to your images in just the areas where you want them. And the adjustments that you make will be perfectly feathered with none of the weird halos or edges that you can get with other types of masking techniques.